Hello and welcome. It is time once again to try to fix something and today on the workbench I have another PS5 uh, Blu-ray edition and um, this one I believe is supposed to be dead, totally dead. It's in pretty good shape physically. Um, let's see, okay I've got power con connected I think. Yeah, let's just see what she does shall we? Eject, no response. Power, no response. Okay, the description was accurate. So, yeah, let's see if we can get some covers off this thing. Maybe we just have a dead power supply. I'm overdue for just a simple dead power supply. Well, the outer covers are off. And this may be the very first PS5 that I have run into with uh, roach infestation. Um, nothing too overwhelming yet, but I'm definitely seeing some some signs there so huh but hey look at there the the uh, tape is still intact this is this clock it hasn't been taken off and that I don't think that's been taken off so we've got a sealed PS5 here that may just have a dead supply due to uh, critters okay let me get on into it and let's see what how bad it is all right we're getting down to the heart of things uh, I've got it plugged in. Let's see if we have 12 volts on our supply. Uh, we do not. That's ground over here. I'm grounded right over here. Nothing. Now, when I plugged in that power cord, I heard a pop. So, like, the main fuse is not broken. Not blown, I should say. Um... If I can see, I'm not sure if you can hear it. Probably won't pop like it usually does because I just had it plugged in. No, it didn't pop that time, but trust me, it did pop just a moment ago. So I'm going to say our supply is dead, but our main fuse is not blown. She's shutting down in some way. So, okay. Our first dead supply likely due to roaches I'm going to guess because there there's there's definitely a smell and there's some there are some pieces and parts left behind from critters so I think that's what we're going to find um, and I'm not sure if I have this supply this is a different uh, model than I'm used to I think EDM 020 that's the motherboard model so I'm not sure if the supplies I have will fit in there but uh, I'm going to find out all right so good news I do have an identical uh, 400 ER, if you can make out the label there. There you go. So yeah, we'll pop this in there and see if we have a little more noise out of this PlayStation 5. And as I remove the power supply, yeah, that's what I'm greeted with. That's nice and lovely. All right, our uh, test supply is in. Uh, fans connected. I think we're ready to see what happens. Uh, eject. No eject. Okay. Power. We do have power. I wonder if we don't have eject because I, don't have the, I do not have the Blu-ray drive in there. So maybe normal for it not to beep. Oh, I think I saw it lock. It's thinking about it. It's probably going to do a drive check. Still have a blue light. I'm guessing it's going to want to check out its system storage. There we go. Okay. This is looking promising, so we need to fix a power supply that has most likely been invaded by the cucaracha. Okay, and she's going to need a deep cleaning. Um, all in the case. I have not had to clean one of these yet. You know what I mean? As far as totally disassemble it and put the parts in the bathtub and scrub it. I've done that many times on a PS5. This is the first four I'm going to have to do that with though. But uh, okay, let's get this power supply inside and see if we can repair it because I like to hang on to my spare. All right, we are inside. We're going to take a look at this power supply on the workbench. As soon as I find my screwdriver, it seems to run away. Well, 
I think someone has borrowed my screwdriver. Okay. Maybe I can get it out with this one. Not quite the right size. plastic parts that PS5 are soaking in the bathtub some nice hot soapy water because they smell like roaches and I'm sure these these case parts here are going to need the same treatment as soon as I get it apart and this again I don't recommend people do this unless you're familiar with working on high voltages because there are voltages in here that can hurt you Finally, <sighs> all right, let's see what we can find on this. These don't look too dirty. I did see one roach part, but you know, these PS5 supplies have such small holes in them, it's gonna be hard for you know, the, the bigger, fatter roaches can't get in there. But there are a few pieces falling out, so some, some babies made it in there, it looks like. Might give those a good wash. Just on general principle. Alright. What did we blow? Maybe some continuity mode. Uh, main fuse, the main fuse never goes. Main fuse is fine. Um, seem to remember. Yeah, there's a fusible resistor over here. Looks like a 1 ohm, or probably a 0.1 ohm. And the fusible resistor is open. And before I go any further, I need to discharge those capacitors. You know, you get in a hurry, you get all excited. You forget to discharge the capacitors. You get bit by said capacitors. Um, okay. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. A whole lot of nothing. Okay. Fair enough. But if that fusible resistor has opened, I think we have probably lost a MOSFET. Check these right here. That's pretty shorted. That's rather shorted. Shorted. Everybody gets a short. So don't really see any massive scorch marks nothing terribly obvious and there was 
nothing. You know, usually on the fours, you could see a, you know, you'd see a, a scorch mark, a burn mark in there. You know, wherever the roach blew up. Maybe this one wasn't destroyed by roaches. Maybe it was destroyed by lightning. I don't know. But we do have some shorted MOSFETs here. And possibly the DAP-53 that drives said MOSFETs. And I cut myself getting the case open. So, yeah. So do these MOSFETs just blow on their own? I kind of doubt that. And are they the same? Are both of them identical? Let me see. 18N60M2. I do hope I ordered some of those. All right, that's the place to start. I guess we'll get those MOSFETs out and see if that's the only thing shorted. Okay, I just want to confirm that these uh, transistors still read shorted now that we've taken them out. Yep, pretty much. Pretty much. And the resistor is still open. Okay. But what else? But wait, there's more. I mean, I don't know. You may have gotten something else. We'll clean this up a little. Let's see what we're doing. I'm wondering about the DAP-53. Let's take a look at that under the microscope. Well, that's not very useful. Um, I don't remember which one of these pins does what. Let's just see if we can find anything shorted, though. Uh, we'll start with pin one. No, no short. Three, four, four. It reads grounded, which it may be. Let me zero out my leads here. So I'll know the difference between 
you know, ground and uh, a low resistance. That's pretty much ground. Okay, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So the only one ground it was pin four. This is in continuity mode, not in diode mode. Maybe I'll switch to diode mode for <clears throat> some of these diodes. Nothing shorted there. And this has a resistor across it. So it's going to read kind of strange. You have to, you'd have to lift it to do a good check on that one. There's where our transistors were. And our resistor. Why did our transistor short? Huh? Unless a roach crawled, bought, crawled, crawled across just the right point and they got biased on and stuck on. I don't know why they would have just just randomly decided to go. Here we are. Not really finding any shorts. Nothing looks burnt. So I could just throw a couple of transistors in there and see what happens. Kind of bring it up slow on the variac but of course if this DAP53 is bad I've got a good chance of blowing them too but I am curious if it's still good I'm curious also let me check see if I have these transistors I, I think I think when these supplies came out I bought some of those because uh, it was kind of obvious they were going to be a, a point that would fail let me see what I have. Okay, the original part, if you can read that. Eighteen in sixty M two. Anyway, um let me show you this differently. Okay, the original part is an eighteen in sixty M two, which is a uh in channel 600 volt 13 13 amp um, power MOSFET and I think what I've been replacing it with is this you can see the part number of it 13 amp I think it's rated 600 volts and it's been working well but uh, yeah that's what I've been using because I have uh, eight left so that's what we're going to put in there and see how that goes. You know, I had almost forgotten that I had taken diode readings from a supply, although this is a, uh, a 400 DR, and I think this is a 400 ER, which is very similar, and of course uses that same DAP53 chip. Let's just check these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten,
9, 10, 11 don't quite match up. Because you know, also though, the MOSFETs aren't in there. That could affect the reading. Okay. Let's go ahead and replace those transistors and that fusible resistor, of course. It's not going to do anything without that. Our transistors have been replaced along with our uh, fusible resistor there, which is a 0.1 ohm, 2 watt. Um, I think we're ready to test the supply. I've got my load hooked up, set for 8 amps of, of current. And I got it plugged into my uh, AC uh, transformer, variable AC transformer. So I'm going to turn it on and bring it up very, very slowly. And let's see what happens here. up to 50 volts still not on there it goes just trying to start Ooh, doesn't look good I don't know if it's got a problem or if it's the startup current is just too great let me bring it up a little bit Yeah, that doesn't look good. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. These things have a pretty high... I have to turn my voltage up. It's just... Uh, somewhere around 90, 100 volts she'll run. But there's a pretty good startup s s current surge there at the beginning that loads my transformer down. It loads the transformer down to the point that the supply shuts off. The, the voltage comes back up, and then it... It's just a repeating cycle there. But I think we're working. 11.86. I'm dialed up to 120 volts AC in right now. So yeah, that looks good. She's drawing 8 amps. I think she'll work. Uh, let me get this thing, you know, get all the parts cleaned up, and we'll put this back together. And we'll be ready to test it out in the garage. Well, here we are back out in the garage. This PS5 is fully reassembled. Uh, our repaired power supply is in there. She cleaned up rather nicely. Uh, one scratch right there on top, I see. But other than that, pretty good shape. Uh, cords are attached. Monitor's on. Let's see what we have. Beeps. Flashing blue light. And I think the monitor locked. Excellent. 1080p. Okay, I think this one's going to be coming back from the dead. And that was a relatively easy one. Just a, I like a simple power supply problem. I'll take them when I can get them. Well, if you enjoyed that at all, thought it was interesting or educational, please give me a thumbs up, and I will see you in the very next repair. So long for now.